in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. A very warm welcome to St Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate our Harvest Festival. Thank you for clicking on the link and joining me, Reverend Rod, as I lead our Harvest Celebrations today. I had hoped as part of this online service that I'd be able to be out in the field around us, um, but unfortunately the weather isn't just making that possible at all. However, it does mean we can gather here as preparations for our harvest celebrations in the coming days are in full swing. Thank you then, as I say. This, our order of service, is available on our website. Hopefully you've also received it by email, but if you haven't, if you've uh, found this service in a different way, go to our website, stmarys-bocking.com forward slash notice sheet, and there at the very top, you'll see the order of service I'm using today as we give thanks for the harvest. We use these opening responses. We have come together to offer our worship and to thank God for journeying with us through the year, giving thanks for the harvest of the land and fields around us, here in Hanfield and Bocking, as well as those elsewhere in your creation. May your continued blessing be upon them and us as we seek to share that harvest and build each other up in faith. God of life and love, we rejoice in your abundant gifts. God of all peoples and all places, we celebrate your generosity and grace. God of the earth and heavens, we praise you for your provisions. God of life and love, we bless your holy name. And so we join together in singing the first of our two hymns for our service this week, a classic for harvest, we plough the fields and scatter. <laughs> In your mercy, forgive us and help us. 
we enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but forget that you have given them to us. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care for the world you have made. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there was no God and no heaven. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, Forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of the kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our harvest collect, our special prayer for this festival. Let us pray. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading from James chapter 5, beginning at the 7th verse. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A gospel reading. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, Look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labour. Others have laboured and you have entered into their labour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't have failed to notice that 007 is back. Yes, Bond, James Bond himself, a character who we all know, whether in today's guise as Daniel Craig, or all the way back to the first film, which was Doctor No, with Sean Connery as the title character. The books from which the films are made date back to 1953. The title character likely then, when those stories were published in his early 20s. That means that Bond, James Bond, 
is actually about the same age as the Queen, but looking pretty good on it, I'm sure you'll agree. Bond has a different life cycle to the rest of us, played by at least seven people over the years and soon to be replaced again. He is sort of reborn each time and then goes through this cycle of loss, meeting a girl, seeing off the baddie and quite often losing the girl before we start all over again. Along this repeated cycle, we learn new things about him. His favourite drink? Vodka martini, shaken, not stirred. His favourite jam? Yes, favourite jam, little scarlet strawberry jam from Tip Tree. It's true. That cycle of life, repeated nature, is what we see particularly at this time of year. June and July at Tip Tree brought in quite the bountiful strawberry harvest. Then through July and August we saw our own fields around us change as crops were harvested and brought in. Now that is all complete, and so we celebrate. Harvest Festival, a time for thanksgiving. Not just that it has been completed, but that we have it in such abundance. So we do two things, thank our farmers and seek to share what we have meeting then not just our needs, but others. And with that in mind, thank you to those who have brought items for the food bank and left them at our churches. Your contributions really will make a difference. But what about tomorrow, when Harvest Festival is over? Thanksgiving done, what happens next? Well, all too often we think our farmers become something akin to a sort of Boxing Day Father Christmas. Job done, now to rest for another 365 days. The reality, and we can see it in our fields, is that the work goes on. Immediately ploughing fields, drilling and then sowing seed once again. Harvest is just one point along this cycle that forever keeps going. And so we also today take a moment to pray for our farmers who are out in all weathers, all year round, providing food for us. Harvest is also often the time we think about our own fruit when we reflect on where we have been a blessing, a gift to others. A reminder that we too must, through our faith, share what we have, living out and bearing the fruits of the Spirit. That passage, the first, our epistle reading from James, touches on just some of the fruit, talks about us being patient, tolerant, understanding, and to resist grumbling. There is much, much more fruit to be offered from us. This is indeed harvest time. Our second passage, though, from John, hints that the picture is much more complex, that while there is a cyclical element to being fed, nurtured, and then bearing fruit, that we're called to do so alongside sowing and reaping too. One sows and another reaps, we heard. It is then always harvest time. It is also always a time for sowing. God's generosity in always offering seeds of faith, watching them grow in us and others. It is not a one-off, nor annual action or event, but his generosity is forever. And he will always be seeking to sow seeds of faith in us, in his children. 
so too is his blessing. God's abundant blessing is not just when we feel we need it most, but his grace always rests upon us to nurture, encourage, enliven our faith, that it will grow and flourish, that it will bear fruit for ourselves, for one another, and for God's kingdom. We are called to live a life of mirror image to that of God. An impossible task, you may say. And yes, to do so perfectly will be impossible, but we must try. We can't limit ourselves to thinking about bearing fruit just at harvest, or recognising the seeds of faith in us for a few days only. But to make that cycle part of our day-to-day lives. Every day, we must seek to sow seeds for others, to encourage and build each other up, and then to bear the fruit that follows. At harvest, then, we rightly give thanks. We rightly seek to share that bounty. But we also take this opportunity to reconnect with what a life in faith, a life as a labourer in the fields, means for us. A time of sowing, a time of caring, and a time to harvest that good fruit. The backdrop to all of that is complicated. From the busyness of our lives to the challenges of living today in our rather strange and often selfish world. How often do you look to our world and wish to see it differently? Well, it begins with us. What can we do differently? Where can we sow seeds, encourage and act out of love? Unlike Bond, James Bond, we don't get to try all over again and again and again. This is our time in the field. And as Q says, field operatives must often use every means at their disposal to achieve their objectives. So, to close, from me with love, you only live once. Live and let live. For in God's service, You have a licence to love, because sowing and reaping are forever. Amen. And so, in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let us pray. Let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world and for all God's people in their daily life and work. God, the beginning and end of all things, in your providence and care, you watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayers that in us and in all your people, your will may be done, according to your wise and loving purposes in Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all through whom we receive sustenance and life, for farmers and agricultural workers, for packers, distributors and company boards, as you have so ordered our life that we depend upon each other. Enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of others before our own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all engaged in research to safeguard crops against disease and to produce abundant life among those who hunger and whose lives are at risk. Prosper the work of their hands and the searching of their minds that their labour may be for the welfare of all. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for governments and aid agencies, and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and starvation. By the grace of your Spirit, touch our hearts, and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty, and make us wise stewards of your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for those who are ill, remembering those in hospital and nursing homes, and all who are known to us. We pray for all who care for them. Give skill and understanding to all who work for their well-being. We pray by name for Terry Senior, Jean Burton, Elizabeth Wright, Paul Bradshaw, Jean and John Goodwin, Sue, Jackie, Francis, Peter, Jennifer, Lisa, Joe and Bernard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, whom we entrust to your eternal life, in the hope of resurrection to new life. Praying for those who have recently passed away and remembering with thanks from our year's mind this week, Joyce Brown, Brian Comfort, Mary Williams, Neville Sibley, Teresa Farrow, and Edward Francis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we conclude by joining together in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Invite us now to join together in our second and final hymn for this harvest celebration, and it's a real favourite of mine. We sing Bringing in the Sheep.
Thank you for joining me then for our Harvest Festival celebrations this week. I hope you'll continue to watch our online services or maybe you're able to join us in person either at St Mary's Bocking or at Panfield Church. We use these closing responses to finish and close out our service today. God of life and love, clothe us with love and make us thankful. God of all peoples and places, satisfy our hunger and quench our thirst. God of the earth and the heavens, bless us in our living and loving. And the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer and giver of life, be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Freely you have received, freely give. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.